On this basis, coming to some concrete aspects of our project and of our proposal, you have to realize that the topics that you are proposing today were primarily defined by pharmaceutical companies working together and identifying indeed the topics on which they would like to work together, in which they are ready to commit resources, and for which they are looking for the best external partners possible. So those companies define the topics which are then discussed with our scientific committee, other stakeholders, they are refined, and um, <coughs> the companies then decide to commit resources to these topics. And they ask us, which means the executive office of IMI, to organize the process leading to the selection of uh, the best external partners which will submit, in answer to the call for proposal, expression of interest, which will be put forward by consortia of um, bodies, institutions, which are eligible for funding by uh, the uh, Innovative Medicines Initiative, so primarily academic teams, uh, SMEs, uh, patients' organizations, sometimes regulatory agencies. There is also a possibility to include partners which are not eligible for uh, public funding, and this can be uh, detailed uh, later. We organize this competitive process of the expression of interest using independent experts, we have representatives of companies attending our evaluation panels to explain what's uh, the expectation of industry, but this is very important to realize the uh, industrial scientists do not take part in the final ranking, in the final selection of uh, the best consortium. This uh, final process is exclusively in the hands of independent observers. Uh, expert, sorry. When this uh, consortium is selected, is selected, it is invited to meet with the FPR companies, and from now on, they uh, constitute a single consortium, developing a full project proposal, which is subject to a final review. Our role is to organize all this and also, and this becomes a more and more important role of this office and that's why you will have a specific presentation on this, is to act as, if you wish, a neutral third party, a honest broker, to help to solve the most difficult issues when you assemble consortium with large companies, small biotech, small companies and uh, academic uh, teams. So you will hear later this morning the concrete uh, experience of partners in the ongoing projects. So I will not detail all these 15 projects which are now up and running. They are derived from the first call of proposal. You have here the budget which is committed. The only point I would like to insist on this slide is the fact that most of these projects Con in consistence with the, uh, the, the uh, overall goal of IMI are coordinated by uh, industry representative, but there are a few exceptions, as a project on education and training which is coordinated by an academic institution from Switzerland, and a project on pharmacovigilance which is coordinated by the European uh, Medicines Agency. So for specific topics, and we will have an example for the third call, it is indeed uh, considered that to have a coordinator outside the industry might be uh, preferable. But by and large, most of our R&D projects are indeed coordinated, managed by companies, members of this European Federation of Large Pharma. So you will hear more concrete experience, as I said, but from the executive office perspective, what I would like to tell you for this general introduction is that 
indeed IMI is more than just a partnership between large companies and academia. We have in several of our projects a large participation of regulatory agencies, either national of the European Medicine Agency. We have an important par participation of patients' organization and SMEs, and certainly that we would like to increase the participation of patients' organization and SMEs, very important for the development of the pharmaceutical sector in Europe. I hope that you will realize later this morning that there is uh, indeed a lot of enthusiasm among all those working in our project. It's very important if you decide to apply that indeed you discuss with those who are already engaged in the project and I'm convinced that you will realize their enthusiasm when they are in academia to discover uh, individual in the industry that they don't anticipate to, uh, <coughs> to encounter, to meet. And uh, in the other direction, I think that in the industry, the scientists, first of all, are very often happy to work very often again with uh, uh, academic uh, colleagues. And uh, indeed, this type of partnership, I think we have already the proof of evidence that they can work quite efficiently. We have still to acknowledge that IMI is still work in progress. Nothing is settled uh, definitively. We are still ongoing discussion to make IMI more efficient, especially on two aspects, which are the boundaries of pre-competitive research and the management of intellectual property. The boundaries of pre-competitive research is that we try to focus our future activities on really uh, <coughs> fields, areas in which we can anticipate that the most difficult question relate to competition, not only between companies, but also difficult questions in terms of competition for uh, SMEs and also for academia, for technology transfer office can be solved. And we learned, for example, from the first call project, that when you have projects dealing directly with drug targets, as you can imagine, the boundaries of pre-competitive research are more difficult to define. Regarding the IP, Magali Poineau will give a presentation on this important aspect in a moment. We also realize that knowledge management is critical, and that's why for the second call project, which are currently finalized, so I will not comment on this project today, but I would like still to emphasize that knowledge management is high on the agenda of this second call project. For example, there is an important project for the development innovative approach for electronic health uh, records. Now, the goal of the day is indeed to provide you the <coughs> relevant information for the third call for proposal, which you can consider as now officially uh, launched, so that the information which is now posted on our website can be considered as the final one. So uh, these are the list of uh, the topics for which we will <coughs> uh, ask for call for proposal. I will not go into details because there will be dedicated workshop. However, in a few minutes, I would like to briefly comment on each of those topics since obviously every one of you cannot attend all sessions. Drug-induced liver injury first. As you know, drug-induced uh, liver injury is still a very important matter of concern for patients and for industry. As you know, there are different types of drug-induced liver injury, either those related or you have idiosyncratic reactions, which might be indeed devastating. Fortunately, they are rare, rare but when they occur, they might be extremely uh, severe. For the companies, that, that's a great matter of concern in the development of drugs, especially when side effects become apparent late. So this is a very good example where a public-private partnership can be useful to improve the situation, to develop new biomarkers, to be able to better predict these uh, important side effects using innovative approach, 
mechanistic approach, for example, system biology approach, and uh, coming with proposal to uh, develop uh, tools, biomarkers, to uh, be used to predict more efficiently the side effects. Immunogenicity of biopharmaceuticals. As you know, if you look at the new molecular entities accepted by regulatory agencies, biopharmaceuticals, <coughs> recombinant proteins are more and more important, and as you know, they can induce reaction of the immune systems, which can have a number of consequences. First, they can neutralize the activities of this new drug, and second, they might lead to side effects to adverse reaction, for example, anaphylactic reactions or autoimmune reactions. So it's very important there also, in the interest of the public, but also of the companies, because it's a limitation for the development of these new agents, monoclonal antibodies, uh, agent neutralizing cytokines, or recombinant cytokines, growth factors themselves. It's very important to streamline the, the development of those, of those products to indeed better understand and develop new tools to uh, address the consequences, the mechanism of uh, the uh, immune uh, reactions, and that's the goal of this second topic. Obviously, all this will be detailed this afternoon by those who in the industry uh, prepared and proposed uh, these topics. Immunosafety of vaccines, you all know uh, the discussions which occurred last year about the safety of H1N1 vaccines, but you have to understand that, you know, the allegation about vaccines extend well beyond the H1N1 story. There are still, every year, in Europe, children dying of missiles because of allegations, for example, about missile vaccines. So it's really critical that, in an open, transparent manner, all the experts which can uh, indeed, in a rational way, address the question of the safety of vaccine, join their forces. And this is the objective of this uh, topic, where, interestingly enough, there will be both basic approach, mechanistic approach, but also epidemiological approaches. <coughs> Autism. As you know, this is a disease with growing importance. I think that there are about three millions of individuals suffering from autism across Europe, and this will further uh, increase. It increases uh, every year. And as you know, it's a spectrum of disorders. So it's very difficult. It was very difficult for company to imagine how to address the development of new therapy for this. Now, there are some recent hits. They learn from rare disease in which you have a noted phenotype such as fragile X, neurofibromatosis, for example, uh, or the red syndrome. They think that they can learn from the rare disease with uh, autism uh, traits uh, about potential targets. And also, as you know, there have been recent publication on uh, genetic determinants of autism. So company realized that it's still very complicated, but we might now have some ideas how to develop innovative therapies. It's still very risky, very complicated. That's why they join their forces, and that's why they are looking for external partners, helping them in this uh, development process, helping them to establish standards to evaluate, for example, the efficiency of drugs in clinical trials, etc and also to get more insight on the mechanistic uh, behind uh, the uh, autism uh, disorders. 